James, you've been around long enough. You, you saw an offensive line that wasn't real productive a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Now to the point where you, you guys are getting a lot of credit for how well you're playing. So difference, how, how much better are you? What, what, what was the struggles way back when? Uh, I think the biggest struggles we had back when we weren't as consistent and performing as well as we should be was like the little details. You know, all the time in offensive line play, we talk about first step, second step, pad level, hat placement, and things like that are what really killed us in the past. But over the off season and all through summer, we really harped on the little things, and uh, it's starting to show up more often now. You know, on the backside of stretch, we have better first steps now, and it showed on Thursday. You know, we got Wyatt cut off a two eye, which a tackle is not supposed to do. But if you have a first good step, like he did on that. Uh, it's not really an issue. And then I think the other thing is, is the uh, trust that Graham shows on us. You know, having having a coach that trusts the offensive line to go for it on fourth down or third down is really reassuring to us. And we really want to make sure we get, get that down no matter what. So Gratifying to you to be able to average 218 a game without a running quarterback. Yeah, that's nice. But uh, – it it take, doing that kind of puts pressure on us on the pass game because they know he's not a rusher, so we're gonna get more edge blitz and just edge pressures. But uh, no, that's something definitely to be proud of. Yeah. Pass protection been good too. We, we talk a lot about the run, but you haven't given up many sacks. Yeah, uh, I think across the board, pass protection's been good. Um, the biggest key for that is just staying square and kind of just. We really focused last week on tendencies that they had, and they gave away a lot of their stuff. So we spent the whole week game planning it and kind of like picking up on those tendencies. And uh, a lot of that came to play during the game, and that helped with pass protection. That helps in any game is if you can pick up a tendency like that. So Graham was in here before, and he was talking about the philosophy of attacking grass and basically calling what he sees. How much is – have you seen, have you noticed from JT from game one to game four of him having the freedom to flip plays or to call and things that are? Having that freedom as quarterback and having a quarterback that's smart enough to do that is, I think, a big step for a Power 5 program. You know, there's not a lot of people that can pick apart a defense like that in a live situation and then know when to flip it and uh, make the correct call. But uh, having him do that, takes a lot of stress off of us you know there was a play on Thursday where they had seven guys at the right side of the ball and we flipped it to the opposite play and it it made a huge difference because in the past we've never done that so we would have ran the play into the seven guys and been outnumbered four to whatever we I think we had a tight end on the right so we'd been outnumbered four to three and it's just it wouldn't have worked but I think having that from Graham and JT takes a lot of stress off of us. How important is it that you and Zach have played Side by side for you know a couple of years now. Yeah, having having the chemistry in the middle between Zach and I and even Doug too, um, it makes because we all rotate at center, you know, so we all know the calls and know what we should do on the play, and we kind of trust each other. So there's not we don't have to communicate as much, so we can look at the defense faster and kind of get everything set and know what we're gonna do before the majority of the time anybody else does. So that's it's nice. Graham actually talked about that during the Virginia Tech game, he asked JT what pass play he wanted, and JT actually said, no, I think we're better off running right here. Did you guys almost take that as a compliment as well? Because yeah. obviously he would not say that if you – Yeah, having, having people that have confidence in us really boosts us up and gives us the extra push that we need to do what we need to do. Do you get any input? I mean, do I go and say, hey, um, this is – we can run this. Uh, does that come into play? Uh, not, not so much on our end, but there was a, there was a drive where we came up the field and CJ actually came over to us and coach Moore and said what he was seeing in the backfield. And I think a couple of drives later, we did exactly what he said and he bursted a big run. So it's not so much on our side cause we're more, we can't see as much as they do, right. but a guy in the backfield can come over and say that and we'll adjust off of it. And like we did with CJ, there was a, there was a big run that came from that. Kind of curious if you could kind of take me back uh, what, what the linemen were talking and thinking about when Graham first gets hired and he obviously comes in with the air raid thing. So you guys probably had some perceptions or thoughts on what the offense was going to look like right. as opposed to what it actually looks like now. How different, uh, you know, what, what kind of story is there there from, from your guys' point of view? 
uh, right now, you know, there's a uh, big difference from when he got here. Like you just said, everybody was focused on the uh, air raid. But at, like you said, we were at from, what, 218? That, I don't think anybody expected that, and I don't think we did either. So having that flip kind of, like, it, we trust what he's going to do for us. So. Thinking, well, I'm just gonna be passing yeah. right? Yeah. I mean. But having having the change of pace is really nice because you know we rush for 218 a game. They're gonna fill the box and that opens up the deep pass. So there's a lot more options there. How much of CJ Donaldson's emergence surprise you? When did you sort of say, you know what, this tight end's really good running back? I honestly didn't even know he was a tight end when he got here. Uh, I found that out after the pit game. But uh, I think those runs he had in the pit game kind of really set the tone for him and that got us excited about him and we like blocking for him like we love blocking for guys like that but uh yeah he he came out of nowhere for me honestly I had no idea it was a tight end I thought it was a running back the whole time and then the pit game happened and I was needless to say shocked so you should block for a guy like that knowing that um he can run through arm tackles yeah if you if you miss something he's gonna make someone miss at least he's either gonna make a miss or just run oh, through him cool. so that's always nice to have in the backfield. Hey, James, um, excuse me. Different running backs and receivers have had one story or another about JT and something that he says during the week to get him ready for Saturday, like watch out for the deep back here, mm -hmm. watch out for the gap here. I'm guessing that would come through with protections yeah. for the offensive lineman. Yeah. So the communication with you guys, how often does he – suggest something and, and it's spot on the it works uh majority of the time if he sees something he'll ask us and say what do you guys think especially during the week if we see it on film but in the game he'll see it and he'll just tell us and we won't think twice about it so uh whenever he suggests something we, we do it just because we know that he's smart enough to pick it up and that it's more than likely going to happen so what type of confidence does that give you all when you don't have to worry about everything because he's it, got it refined. It's, it's not because, you know, a lot of the time Wyatt and I are looking at corners and Nichols trying to see what they're going to do. The same with Doug and Quay and Yates. Uh, and Zach's just looking at the middle. So we can't really see everything. So if we see something on the left side and then he sees something on the right and he flips the protection, that's a real big, real big thing for us because then it, we go right into what they're trying to do for us. Curious, because um, JT kind of mapped out what his week of, was like last week of how he prepares, you know, one day would be um, certain down and distance, top three coverages, pressure percentages, so forth, and he would go all through that, and then he would look at red zone. In your week, what do you study from uh, Sunday through Thursday or Friday? What, what no, are the things you're looking going at? Going into, like, Sunday and Monday, we kind of just watch the last week's game okay. just to watch it, see if we can see anything. And then as the week goes on, uh, we focus more on, like, top blitzes, red zone blitzes and then like favorite fronts. And then throughout the week, like on my free time, you'll sit there and like watch cutups of like certain tendencies they might have or like specific alignments they have. So there's not as much detail as a quarterback, but uh, there's definitely some cutups that we watch that are more important. James, obviously major college football players just talked about all the study time you have. But you're also a family guy. How do you, how do you balance that? Do you, during the season, you just accept that you don't see the kids as much? Yeah, the, the season's the hard part. Uh, right now, we're in the thick, thick of it. And uh, it got kind of mid-seasons where it gets rough because, you know, you're almost done, but you're still in the very beginning of it. And uh, a credit to my wife, you know, she's alone all day, every day with these kids. And uh, she does a great job of keeping everything together and keeping her cool. But... Uh, yeah, kind of during the season, you just accept the fact that you're not going to be home as much. It sucks, but uh, you have two lives, and sometimes one takes more out of the other. So, you slip home during the day to see the kids because they're probably asleep. Yeah, pretty early. Yeah, so. usually she she's probably been asleep for about an hour now. So, uh, whenever I get home at night, she's probably asleep, and so I take as much time as I can to get get with both of them. Coach Brown, and obviously. Him being a head coach, he's got to be a little bit more political when it comes to the whole conference realignment and stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, you're still a guy, you're a student, you're a kid. This could be the last time West Virginia plays Texas. Yeah. Uh, does that mean anything uh, to you? It does. You know, we Texas and West Virginia have great games in the past. Uh, it's not as much of a rivalry as everybody thinks it is. But, uh, you know, losing a quality opponent in this uh, – 
Big 12 like this, it means something, you know, because it takes away from your schedule and your competition. But we're bringing in a bunch of good good teams, good coaches. So it's it sucks losing them, but I think it's not as big a deal as it should be. Anything else for James?